This video will take a look at finding surface area of three-dimensional objects. Surface area is, of course, the area of all of the sides of the object added together. And uh, what we have here in this cylinder is three, three sides, really. We have a top part, a bottom part. I think you could see that the top and the bottom would be the same shape. They're two circles of the same size. And we have the outer part of the cylinder, which would be like the wrapping of the soup can. And when you detach that, you have a rectangular shape. So to find the area of this figure, we're simply going to need to add up the area of the top, the area of the bottom, and the area of the side. And we know that the area of the top, the top is a circle. And a circle has a, an area of pi r squared. The bottom shape is also a circle. It would have an area of pi r squared. And the side, the uh, label of the can, if you will, would be a rectangle. And the area of a rectangle is length times width. So I'm just going to write these, these shapes out here again. We've got a circle with a radius of 5. And then we have a rectangle. The rectangle has a height of 10. And then the length of this would be the distance around the outside of this circle. So imagine if we broke the label right there and peeled the label off the can then the circumference of this circle here would be the length of this label. And circumference is pi times diameter. And the diameter of this would be 10 because we can see that the radius is 5. So this length is going to be pi times 10. That was the distance around the top of the can, the circumference of the circle, pi times the diameter. And so now it's simply a matter of working these out. So the area of the top would be pi times 5 squared, which is 25 times pi. And our units will be centimeters squared. So we know this unit here was centimeters. Area is always square units, so centimeters squared. The bottom of the can is exactly the same. So 25 pi centimeters squared. And the area of the side, or the label of the can, would be length, which is pi times 10, times the width, which is 10. 10 times 10 is 100, so we have 100 pi centimeters squared. And so to find the surface area of the entire can, we would simply need to add the top part of the can plus the bottom part of the can plus the distance around the outside. So the area of our cylinder will be 25 pi plus another 25 pi plus 100 pi centimeters squared, which is 150, oops, 150 pi centimeters squared. And if we wanted a decimal approximation, 150 times pi, 471.24 centimeters squared would be the surface area of our cylinder. Let's take a look at this uh, pyramid that we've got right here. Um, the period has a base to it that's rectangular. So it has a length of 20 and a width of 16. And then there are four triangles that make up the sides of this pyramid. Uh, this one on this side and the one on the back has a height of 17. And the ones on the side have a height of 18. So if we were to ask, if we're asked to find the surface area of this, we have the area of the bottom, 
and we have the area of the left and right side, which would be the same. And we have the area of the front and back side. So I'm going to call this triangle here the front and the one on the back, the back, and then this is the left side and this is the right side. So now it's a matter of simply adding up all these, these different surfaces. So the bottom we said was a rectangle, an area of the bottom then would be length times width, which is 20 times 16 or 320. Oops, we didn't, oh yeah, we did have units. Centimeters squared. The area of the left and the right side, well, these are triangles. And the, the left and the right side has a base of 16 and a height of 18. And the area of triangles is found by base times height divided by 2. So base 16 times the height, which is 18, divided by 2. And I'm going to do this on this. 16 times 18 divided by 2, 144. centimeters squared and the front and the back is, are also triangles base times height divided by 2 the base of the triangles in the front and the back are 20 times their height which is 17 divided by 2 20 divided by 2 is 10 10 times 17 would be 170 centimeters squared so the area in total would be the bottom plus the left and the right side so there's two of those two times 144 and the front and the back are 170 and there's two of those so we would have 320 plus 288 plus 340 which is 8 12, 14, 4, 6, 9. 948 centimeters squared for the area of the pyramid. And so surface area just adding up all the different sides of the figure. Here we have a cone and we have units in inches this time and we're asked to find its surface area. Well, I think we can see that there will be a bottom to it, which is a circle. And we know that the area of the bottom will be pi r squared. And then there's this, this shape that is the cone part, um, which when we unraveled would be a fraction of the circle. And uh, I'm not going to go into how we would calculate that area, um, but it would it would be part part of the, a fraction of a circle, and we can get that fraction by going pi times the radius of the circle down here times s, which is the slant height. In our case, this was was 12 inches. Um, so. We can say that the formula for finding the area of a cone is the bottom pi r squared, that's the circle, plus this lateral area here, which is pi times the radius times the slant height. And so to find the surface area of this cone, now the radius of this will be 8 inches because this 16 inches here represents the entire diameter. So be careful with that. Uh, pi times 8 squared plus pi times the radius again, 8 times the slant height of the cone, which is 12. And just working that out on the calculator, pi times 64, that was 8 squared, plus pi times 8 times... 12 equals, oops, what was that? 
502.65. And this would be inches squared. So here's how we find the surface area of a cone. Uh, let's say we wanted to find the surface area of a soccer ball. Well, I went and Googled uh, what the radius for a soccer ball is because surface area of a sphere, and that's the shape of a soccer ball, is 4 pi r squared. This is the formula for finding the surface area of a sphere, which is the shape is the uh, a ball a soccer ball um, and it came back and it told me that the circumference of a soccer ball is 28 inches well unfortunately we don't in our formula for surface area have any circumference we just have radius uh, but there is a formula for circumference that says it's pi times the diameter so I can find the diameter using this formula. If I put 28 in for my circumference, I get this equation. So 28 equals pi times the diameter. The opposite, the opposite of timesing is dividing. And I want to isolate d, so I'm going to divide by pi. I would cancel that out. I would need to do the same on the left side. So 28 divided by pi is... 28 divided by pi equals 8.91 inches. So there's my diameter. And of course, to find radius, I would see, simply need to take 8.91 and divide it by 2, because the diameter is twice the radius. So divide it by 2. And now I'm at 4.5. Four six. Let me round that off. Four point four six inches is the radius. So now I've got the piece of information I need to find the surface area of the soccer ball. Four pi times four point four six squared equals. Let's go back to the calculator here and go to the power of 2. So I've now just squared that number and I now need to multiply that by pi and by 4. So times pi times 4 equals 249.55 249.55 square inches because our units will be in square inches we're finding area so uh, there we have it the surface area of a soccer ball when they told us initially what the circumference was let's say we know that the surface area of a basketball is Four, sorry, 683.49 square inches. This is indeed the surface area of an official NBA basketball. Let's say we wanted to determine what the radius of that ball is. Well, we got our formula here. Area equals 4 pi r squared. So we could substitute this number right here in for the area because that's what the surface area of the ball is and come up with the radius of this ball so we would need to isolate r so we've got a little bit of algebra to do here um, here's r here we have uh, pi multiplied by it and 4 multiplied by it so the opposite of multiplying is dividing. So I'm going to divide by 4 pi, which will cancel those out. And I need to make sure I do the same on this side. So getting my calculator out here again. 683.49 divided by 4 pi. 
Now I'm going to need brackets here because I'm dividing by two things. So divided by 4 times pi, close the bracket, equals, oops, what was that again? 54.39. 54.39 is equal to the radius of the ball squared. And then the opposite of squaring is square rooting. So taking the square root of both sides to isolate R. Your calculator will have a square root button on it, but mine does not. So I've got to do this a different way. And I get a square root of 7... 7.37. And so we now know that the radius of the basketball is 7.37 inches long.